and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben. And I'm Clark Kent. <laughs> um, little too blonde there, buddy. He's Jake. And we are so glad to have you with us tonight as we dive into a gory and gruesome topic and talk about cattle mutilation. Jacob, how you doing tonight, buddy? So good. How are you? You know, I'm doing pretty good. Good. Doing pretty good. Living life. Oh. You know, got no beef. <laughs> get it? How about we're, a ham? Because we're talking about cattle mutilation. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I know it's funny. Apparently, should... uh, there's a shortage of, of the beef. <laughs> I should be a cow median. <laughs> For all our listeners, the cow puns kind of started with the vampire episode. <laughs> And if you enjoy our really shitty puns and, you know, high class sense of humor and you want to help spread such joyous things to the world, then go ahead and share the show with a friend. Don't forget to. They may enjoy it. You can torture them with this crap, too. And if you are an Apple user, leave us that five star rating and review. It would really help us reach more ears, bring more people in. And when we get to 50, we are going to do a live chat with y'all. Yeah, and it feels like we've been promising this for a year, so get to it, guys. <laughs> yeah, hurry it up. Yeah, or else. And then one last thing before we uh, we get into the episode proper. Um, fair warning, this episode is going to contain some kind of yucky details. Uh, it is about dead farm animals, after all. So it's not like the most disclaimer worthy topic we've ever talked about still think satan's harvest takes the cake on that one i don't know man that one that one uh asylum that i did that one was pretty bad mm, not so sure it was as bad as satan's harvest though okay well listen to all that stuff if yeah you gotta... go back and listen you guys tell us yeah <laughs> especially if you got a weak stomach <laughs> right and uh, speaking of weak stomachs there are images that you can look for about cattle mutilation. Yeah, don't just don't do it. They're, I mean, it's a splody moose. <laughs> like you can if you want. I won't tell you what to do, but if you're if you got a sensitive tum tum, I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm gonna look it up and do things. Uh, um, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, you ready to talk about some mutilated cattle? What is my other favorite subject? Come on. <laughs> All right, then we're going to move along. <laughs> anyway, the look on Jake's face. <laughs> it's worth every stupid jokes. Yeah. Hey, these jokes are utterly hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> can definitely tell your dad. Facts. <laughs> so... <laughs> On April 19th, 2023, KWTX posted an article on their website with the headline, Graphic, Suspicious Cattle Deaths, Mutilations Reported in Texas, Brazos Valley. It is credited as being written by KWTX staff, so not one individual person, but apparently their whole staff had to write this article. It was important enough, I guess. And the article reads... Madisonville, Texas, KWTX. The Madison County Sheriff's Office is investigating the death and mutilation of cattle along TXOSR. Ranchers reported a six-year-old Longhorn Cross cow had been found lying on her side, deceased, and mutilated on their ranch. Quote, a straight, clean cut with apparent precision had been made to remove the hide around the cow's mouth on one side, leaving the meat under the removed hide untouched, end quote, the sheriff said. That's normal. <laughs> the tongue was also completely removed from the body with no blood spilled. Cauterization. The sheriff's office said there were no signs of struggle and the grass around the cow was undisturbed. No footprints or tire tracks were noted in the area. Ranchers also reported that no predators or birds would scavenge the remains of the cow, leaving it to decay untouched for several weeks, the sheriff's office said. 
The sheriff said that while investigating the Longhorn Cross's death, five other similar occurrences involving four adult cows and one yearling were reported along the area of OSR. This involves cases in different locations, pastures, and herds in Brazos and Robertson counties. The other cows were found in the same condition, lying on one side with the exposed side of their face cut along the jawline and the tongue, once again, completely removed, the sheriff said. On two of the five cows, a circular cut was made, removing the anus and the external genitalia. This circular cut was made with the same precision as the cuts noted around the jawlines of each cow. Well, <clears throat> it wasn't me. Similar to the initial case, the sheriff said, there were no signs of struggle or disturbance in the grass, no blood spill, and no noticeable tracks. No predators or birds would scavenge the remains for several weeks after death. The cause of death of all six cows remains unknown. Investigators in the Brazos Valley are aware of similar incidents reported across the United States and are actively coordinating with other agencies to find answers. Please notify the Madison County Sheriff's Office if you or someone you know observes any similar occurrences. Anyone with information on these cases, please contact Investigator Foster at 936-348-2755. Listeners, please don't spam that number, but if you know anything, call them. That is the end of the article, and I'm not sure if it's the original reporting of the article, but it was the earliest one I found. Now, what I do know, with that not being the article, I don't know, but what I do know is that in the week or so following the KWTX article, the story would spread nationwide and be reported on by news outlets such as CBS, ABC, Fox, and the New York Times. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, ladies and gentlemen, but a handful of dead cows don't usually make the national news, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and that's because, like, in, you know, not-so-fun fact, cattle die all the time from different things. They, they live that outside. that not fun? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not talking about when we make them into tasty, tasty T-bones, Jacob. I'm talking about they're just, taking the buttholes. You know, well, that's that's the unusual part, is the, the manner in which they died. It's unusual? Yes, yes. It's it's very unusual for a deceased cow to have his butthole just taken out like that. And the genitals. Yeah, and the genitals. Like the there's, tongue, though. There's a lot of... I mean, kind of, but... Not. So, <clears throat> speaking truthfully, beef cheeks. You said the side of their face is gone. Beef but cheeks. But the meat was left untouched. Oh, never mind. No barbacoa. Right. <laughs> Cow, couch chicharrones. <laughs> <laughs> Left the belly, didn't it? Yeah, there was nothing. No belly cuts. No nothing. So, and with such a clean cut, we can assume that it's not uh, beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Genitals rip off. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> And you get a bodum chew. I run the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> so that article, in, in a nutshell, talks about what is pretty much just a textbook case of cattle mutilation. And according to the ever trustworthy and always correct Wikipedia, cattle mutilation also known as, my favorite, bovine excision, and unexplained livestock death or animal mutilation is the killing and mutilation of cattle under unusual, usually bloodless, circumstances. This phenomenon has been observed among wild animals as well. Worldwide, sheep, horses, goats, pigs, rabbits, cats, dogs, bison, deer, and elk have been reported mutilated with similar bloodless excisions. Often the ear, eyeball, jaw, flesh, tongue, lymph nodes, genitals, and rectum are removed. Rectum's a butthole. Yes, yes it is. That is their definition of a cattle mutilation. And, hey, they got it right for once. Good job, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> now, despite the fact that the phenomenon rarely makes the news, it is not exactly a new phenomenon. do 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 <laughs> uh, you're a dork <laughs> the earliest known documented outbreak occurred in 1606 
and was noted in the official court documents of James I of England. He was the king of England at the time. Quote, whole slaughters of sheep have been made in some places to number 100, in others less, where nothing is taken from the sheep but their tallow and some inward parts. The whole carcasses and fleece remaining still behind. Of this, sundry conjectures, but most agree that it tendeth towards some fireworks. I, I don't know if fireworks had to do with it, but okay. <laughs> Tenards, huh? innards. Before that, tallow, 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 fat, fat. Yes. Okay, so they don't like obese animals. I mean, I guess whoever's doing it need to get that fatty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was Julian Michaels. Who the fuck is that? Oh my goodness. A huge workout sensation of like the early 2000s. Oh, Jill, you said Jillian. I thought you said Julian. Oh. Like, who the fuck is Julian? No, you said Jill. Okay, I know who Jillian Michaels is. Jillian. Okay. <laughs> that was her. Richard Simmons. Anyway. <laughs> That's where he was. <laughs> That's where he spent all his time. <laughs> Out taking cattle's buttholes. Okay, moving well, on. <laughs> so we don't have to cover that episode anymore. Nope, we're not we're missing no. Richard Simmons. <laughs> now, between 1606 and, you know, what else I'm going to talk about here. Other people who will come up again on the podcast looked into cattle mutilations. Uh, Charles Fort collected accounts in England in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. John Keel investigated cases with Ivan T. Sanderson, who we talked about a little bit in our Nahani Valley episode. And Keel was researching them in the upper Ohio River Valley in 1966. So there have been other cases between time. But in 1967, the topic gained public attention after the Pueblo Chieftain, which was a newspaper, published an article about a horse that was mysteriously killed in Alamosa, Colorado. Now, originally, the uh, Pueblo Chieftain kind of fucked up and said that the horse's name was Skippy and that she belonged to Harry King. In truth, the horse's name was Lady, and Harry King was her caretaker, not her owner. Her actual owner was Harry King's sister, Nellie Lewis. I was hoping her name was like Bald King. <laughs> now, Harry became alerted to something being amiss when Lady didn't show up for her treat at the usual time. Worried, he went looking for the Appaloosa horse. He found Lady laying on her side with the bones of her neck and head completely exposed. Just poor lady laying on the ground looking like an equine skeletor and shit. There are pictures of this on the interwebs for anyone interested, but I warn you, they are not pretty. So, <laughs> so it was just like the the first attempt of making one of those two person horse costumes. <laughs> They're thinking maybe we can just do a mask, but as you can see, we've upgraded through the years. That's a theory. <laughs> damn good theory now Mr. Harry King knew instantly that the cuts to the skin were too precise to have been the work of predators and he said there was a chemical medicinal smell in the area further looking around by Nellie Lewis and her husband Burl revealed even more weird shit in no particular order that shit was there were absolutely no tracks of any kind within a hundred feet of the deceased horse, save for those of the few people who had come out to investigate. Even Lady's own tracks were mysteriously absent around her body. Also absent were any sign of struggle as well as any sign of blood. They found 15 burns that could have been circular exhaust marks. About 100 yards north of the dead horse, they found a 10-foot radius of bushes that were usually 3 feet tall, but that had been crushed down to be only about 10 inches. On these bushes, Nellie found some gelatin-like uh, oh, gelatin green globs and a piece of metal that was covered in horse hair. 
After touching these things, her hands began to have a burning sensation until she was able to wash them. So just touching the things that were found at that mutilation made her... I assume the green globs were mostly responsible for the burning sensation, whatever they may have been, but, you know, of course, we don't take samples in any of these stories for analysis. Radioactive stuff, maybe? There are a lot of chemicals that can cause a burning, tingling sensation if they come into contact with skin. Maybe if you study science. (laughs) (laughs) The sheriff's office was contacted, and Sheriff Ben Phillips told them that the horse was probably killed by lightning and refused to even come out and look. (laughs) Way to go, Sheriff. Thanks for the fucking help. Lightning can blow a face off, yeah. Just the skin? Yeah. And muscle? And everything? I kind of don't think so. I kind of don't think so. You can think all you want. (laughs) And furthermore, there wasn't even lightning causing weather in the area at the time. So Mm. there. (laughs) Now, eventually, news outlets would get a hold of this story and spread it around, much like the first little article we talked about. Uh, And people began blaming aliens and UFOs for ladies' gruesome fate, to the extent that a representative of the Condon Committee was sent out to investigate. Condom Committee. Condon Committee. Typo. If you don't know what that is, go back and listen to our Blue Book episode, which Jacob has pretty much mostly forgotten about if you ever listened to it. That was boring. (laughs) Now, if the fact the representative determined that there was no evidence to support extraterrestrial involvement uh, is surprising to you, go back and listen to that Blue Book episode because you'll you'll learn all about them, guys. I was going to say before he brought up the UFOs, like, they bring up circular burn marks that could be exhaust Mm -hmm. like i feel like people wanted to say you ufos but we're just like oh it could be this very broad statement about the circular burn marks i mean they found what they found it doesn't i know but nobody wanted to jump to any hypotheses no not really i wouldn't either I would. <laughs> I see a weird shooting star. I'm like, that's an alien. Well, we're going to get into the uh, the explanations that people give uh, at the Good. end here. <laughs> Good. That's always the funnest. The not so fun one at the beginning, everyone, is going to be a hoax. Like always. Not this time. Hoax is never brought up this time. Honestly. Wow. I mean, I'm sure it is, but not in great enough number to note. Make the speaking list. Speaking about. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's continue our little cattle mutilation timeline here. In 1973, a wave of cattle mutilations were reported throughout seven counties in Kansas and Nebraska. All of these involved the removal of the bovine's genitalia. Weeks later, 38 more mysterious cattle deaths occurred across 11 counties. The Kansas Brand Commissioner's Office somehow determined that the deaths and the missing genitalia were the result of natural causes like predators and disease. I don't know what predators only eat genitalia or what disease only takes off genitalia, but that's what they said. I could tell you, but we'd get canceled. (laughs) Anyway. Oh, thanks. (laughs) That deserves one. (laughs) In June of 74, mutilations began being reported in Lancaster County, Nebraska. That August, the Lincoln Journal Star reported that area residents were claiming to have witnessed unidentifiable helicopters shining spotlights into fields where mutilated cattle were later found. No County Sheriff Herbert Thompson said that the helicopter sightings became a nightly occurrence. He reached out to both the FAA and the National Guard, but neither claimed to know anything about it. Thompson joined forces with the Nebraska State Patrol to investigate, but they found no direct connection between the helicopters and the mutilations. Eventually, ranchers began forming and organizing nightly vigils to watch for the helicopters. This prompted the National Guard to instruct their pilots to fly at higher than normal altitudes to avoid being shot at. (laughs) Eventually, state leaders would call for an investigation, 
which would go nowhere. By October, we were back to blaming aliens. <laughs> now, just as a side note to the timeline in general, the presence of the unidentifiable helicopters during cattle mutilations is something that continues to come up from this point on. It isn't an every occurrence thing, but it is reported in many occurrences. I mean, so just saying, if we have any extraterrestrial listeners, you're cheating. We're not getting the downloads, but, <laughs> you know. But I, for one, will be glad to welcome my reptilian overlords. <laughs> I think it's the Greys. <laughs> Who do you think's in charge of the Greys? Um, it's the, uh, Ewoks. It's the reptilians. Oh. They live in the moon. That's for a different episode. Anyway. Well, <laughs> well uh, come on and, uh, and, you know, defend yourself if you're not responsible for these mutilations. <laughs> In 1975, Senator Floyd Haskell contacted the FBI and asked for help due to public concern regarding the cattle mutilation issue. At the time, he claimed there had been 130 mutilations in Colorado so far that year and reports of it in nine other states. In 1979, the FBI put out a report that said that investigations by New Mexico State Police indicated an estimated number of 8,000 cattle mutilations in Colorado alone with a damage cost of around a million dollars. In today's money, that is approximately $4,157,520.66. It's a lot of chatter, boys. So, I just... This isn't really an organized mutilation, but I did come across this, uh, this story a couple, like a week ago. Mm -hmm. I'm smiling, but sad. Um, a dairy farm, somehow, uh, dairy farms are explosive. Yes. And it was yes, I know a this. very, very large dairy farm and like thousands <laughs> of cattle just exploded. Yeah, it's both sad and funny at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they said it was like the single biggest loss of cattle, mm -hmm. like in history. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yes, methane gas is explosive. Oh yeah, they poo. Yeah, and if you put it in a cistern without proper ventilation, it builds up and becomes explosive. Mm, rat ninjas. I do not know if that's what happened. Rat ninjas. Rat kung fu. <laughs> Patreon.com slash paranatural podcast if you would like to get that reference. Now, as a further side note to the last little bit of thing I said there, uh, and it really doesn't matter, but I'm a pedantic asshole like this. Why the fuck was the New Mexico State Police investigating cow killings in Colorado? Pass. Yeah, same. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving on. More recently, in South America, there have been around 3,500 incidents since 2002, which is a pretty drastic increase from the 400 reported previous to that year. Total. Mm -hmm. 400 total before 2000, or yeah, 2002. 3,500 since. In 2019, five bulls were found mutilated on the Sylvie's Valley Ranch in Oregon. That one went national too, but I don't think as much as this one, the more recent, most recent occurrence here. Now, I've kind of glossed over case details in all but a couple of these instances. The reason for that is that while each mutilation has its unique aspects, there are certain characteristics that are almost universal to the phenomenon. So let's talk about those characteristics, shall we? When we shall. <laughs> so the animals are found with pieces missing that are never found. Eyeballs are missing from sockets. Jaw flesh has been removed, usually only on one side. And tongues are cut out. In a very large percentage of cases, the genitals have been removed and or the animal's anus has been cored out. 
That is a really gross turn of phrase. Cord out its anus. <laughs> All I can picture is those those uh, twisty a, things to harvest plants. That's what I get it to. Like an apple core. You ever seen one yeah. of those? That's what. That's, that's, that's exactly the, what it is. That that's is how the we're getting image cow butts. That, oh boy, good lord. <laughs> good. <laughs> we remind you to look at the the pictures online. <laughs> I mean, if if you're if you want, go ahead. But uh, zero stars. Don't recommend. Also often reporting are missing ears as well as other internal organs. No ears. Sometimes they get uh, an ear or two just cut off. Ooh, who knows? And when, when they are missing organs, it's like they're cut open again with precision, which I'll, I'll get there. And then only like a specific organ is harvested. It's very different than predation. So... When when they investigate these, um, like the open wounds mm. and lack lack of skin, is there anything that they can see that's stopping the bleeding, or is it like we'll get there? Uh, okay. But next is the uh, cleanliness of the wound cuts. The wounds on the animal are clean and precise, often described as surgical. There are no rips or tears to the skin or surrounding tissues, and organs, other than the one being harvested, are unharmed. Many reports indicate that the cut flesh is cauterized at the edges, consistent with use of laser-cutting implements. That's not in a, a majority of cases, but it does come up from time to time. Yes, so it's, it's lightsabers. <laughs> I was on something with the Ewoks. They just got to sleep in there. It's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. No, well, Why are they climbing through the butts? <laughs> got to get in somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no matter the type or extent of injury to the animal, there is no blood evident in the wound or in the area where the carcass is found. In many cases, the vast majority of, in fact... The animal is found to have been almost completely, if not completely, exsanguinated before the excisions took place. Definitions, Benjamin. Uh, exsanguinated means it had its blood drained. Okay. Now, yes. So, so vampires with lightsabers. Precisely. Okay. Yeah, we figured it out. End of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi vampires. <laughs> There is no sign of struggle at all. In the vast majority of cases, there are no tracks of any kind found near or leading up to the mutilated animal, like we talked about in Skippy's case, or Lady's case, whichever one you want to call it. And last but not least, scavengers are hesitant to consume the carcass. Some witnesses have even reported such things as wolves and coyotes actively avoiding the area around the mutilated animal. So, like, they'll come in and they'll get some distance away and then walk way the fuck around it to get wherever they're going, which is not how animals generally behave. That's a, it's a Mel's hole carcass. It's a Mel's hole carcass. It's, it's the fucked up sheep monster thingy. That's what it is. Ooh, bud. All right. Go back and listen to that one, too. Now that everybody's on the same page and has a grasp of the characteristics of cattle mutilation, let's talk about some of the explanations that have been put forth. All right, here we go, Jacob. Get your, get your arguing cap on. Let's start with normal, natural, regular predation. Go ahead, buddy. What do you got? Natural. Natural. Is that what causes cattle mutilations? So... Contrary to popular belief, well, uh, you, you do void your bowels, but I don't think you're going to void them hot enough nor um, explosive, explosive enough to blow out the rectum and sear it shut at the same time. Um, so I'm going to have to say no, especially with the face chopping off well, and like the ears well, and... Well. Could predators not eat out a butthole or eat off an ear? Let's talk just about predation right now. So this was happening a long while ago. Um, and butthole eating is a pretty new sensation. 
So <laughs> I'm going to have to go with no. All right. I'm going to go with no as well. It's not natural predators because all the cuts are really clean. When an animal eats something, that's not the case. <laughs> you no, know what I mean? No, like, that's a bit of a mess. It's a big mess. Uh, and there's blood. Shit gets ripped. Yeah, there's blood. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so no on natural ass predators. Right. Other natural causes, uh, namely illness, as, you know, the cattle die of natural illness. And the decomposition is what causes the mutilated condition. What do you think, Jacob? Again, I'm going to have to go with no. I have no idea what kind of... Um... So, okay, I'll give this one half credit because there are a lot of diseases that can kill cattle. Cattle get sick. And beef cattle are not, like, tended to every day on big ranches because they don't need to be. They can just go out and wander. And most of these cases do involve beef cows. So if they could get something like necrotizing fasciitis, which is, to my knowledge, only found in humans... But it will, it's a flesh-eating bacteria slash disease that there will be no blood, but it can eat all the way into your bone. But that takes a while to kill something, and it's not clean cuts. Right, it's quite a while. But like, say the face missing, um, I'm assuming you can get it in your butthole. And like, it will usually round out. So cuts, absolutely not, but like a rounded out area. And that's still not a clean, precise wound though. Like you just said, it's rounded. Yeah. It's Most rounded. of these it's don't not... have any sort of circular wounds. These are clean, straight cuts. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what yeah. they, what they say is that it's like, you know, the cow dies of an illness of some sort. And then as it decays, that's why its ears will be missing or its eyes will be missing or its butthole is cored out. Or even the cuts themselves, like when they're split down the middle, is from bloating, and then they just split from the pressure. I, I've i seen a lot of decaying animals, and I've never seen one that you didn't look at and go, ooh, that fucker's been laying here a while. And so I also have been around a lot of decaying animals, and at different states, different things happen, but... First off, animals will not avoid it um, unless something internal is telling them it's bad. Stay away. Um, secondly, you don't find the missing fur and skin like you find a, a bag of bones that have fur and skin mm -hmm. all over it. Like predator predatory animals go for the easiest stuff first, which genitals yeah eyes ears yeah that checks out but they go for the belly after yes and they tear it wide open yeah and there is a lot of blood but like that is some quick precise decay and that's not a natural occurrence yes normal decay does not leave this right Normal decay does not take the blood out of an animal. It pulls it in the lowest point and coagulates it, but it doesn't remove it. Right. You know, body parts, when scavengers are avoiding the carcass, where'd the body parts go? Because even decay leaves things behind. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, fur, fucking bones, shit, you know, whatever. Bones will last years. Um, fur will last years. So um, we're going to say it's not natural causes really at all. Correct. Okay. So let's move on. Let's. Fucking crazy people. Just animal abusing sociopathic psychos that just go out there and do this. Peter wasn't around for most of these, so <laughs> I'm, willing to, I'm willing to listen to this one. So... This one does have a bit more validity than the first two, in my opinion, because, yes, people can surgically mutilate an animal. They can't even remove the blood. Where I get hung up on this is no tracks, no struggle. Mm -hmm. A 2,000-pound cow is not just going to stand there and let you fucking kill it. 
even with very strong sedatives, it still takes quite a while. Well, there have been put... laboratory tests and no sedatives have ever been found. Mm. Well, even if they had those, it takes a while for something, let alone or from 500 to 2000 pounds a while yeah. to go to go night night. Yeah. And they're not even fully night night. They're just sedated. They're calm. Correct. Um, so that always kind of throws it off for me is like, ugh. and there's like, no, in some of these cases, all of these wounds you can tell were performed after death, but some of them aren't even lethal. So there's yeah. no sign of death. So yeah, it's just like something real weird happened and now it's missing its butthole weenie and <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Again, contrary to popular belief, cows aren't really into that intensive BDSM. <laughs> um, and I've seen Thousand Ways to Die, and a couple of them involve furries. If you sneak up on a cow, a horse, a goat, even. They will kick the shit out of you. They will like, and those kicks can kill you. There, there's a good chance of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, not break. You would break a bone. Like there is no sneaking up. You would have to walk to them face to face. And most cows, any livestock, will run. They are not very. They're used to humans, but they still don't like them, and they follow the herd. So. For her to just like avoid one of their own, like that doesn't make sense. They all move together. Yeah, generally speaking, yes. And if one of their own is in distress, and I would like to see a single person take down a fucking bull without shooting without, it in the fucking head, which obviously they're not. Right. Or like just like throat slicing it. With no blood, that's... Yeah, that's not gonna happen. All right. No. Next. Next. Government and or military clandestine research into cattle illness and the possibility of transmission to humans. So this theory states that it is the military coming in and grabbing these cows or something and then doing research on them, killing them, putting them back, whatever. <laughs> All right, I'm going to explain this one with simple science. <laughs> if it was just pigs, this would be a more viable explanation because we are more closely related to pigs, like flesh and um, organ-wise. We are. Yeah. And the majority of these are cows. Cows are strictly for beef so the fact that all that would be wasted and sometimes not even an organ being taken sometimes an organ being taken minus the tongue the tongue is an organ but it doesn't make enough sense there is people just like loosely threw this one together I think well, I think most of this has to do with the black helicopters that are seen and who would have those just on staff. Uh, but I'm going to throw my reason for throwing this one in the trash bin is pretty much. First off, we have government agencies that are in control of disease study and things like that and agriculture. And if they wanted to study cattle disease, they could literally just go like knock on the farmer's door and say, Hey, we need to take some blood samples from your cows or even saliva samples. This is the United States government. We spend billions of dollars on way more stupid shit, like <clears throat> gender studies in Pakistan. And cough, cough, cough. They, they, they could, they, they could just pay the, pay the rancher for a fucking cow. All right. They yeah. just here, <laughs> here's 10 grand. We're taking this cow. Yep. Okay. Next. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> okay, go. Satanists. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> like satanic Satanism. cults, yes. <laughs> satanic cults. Okay. Um I don't know a whole lot about Satanism, but I do know that it is in like their guidelines, Bible rules. You don't hurt another living being. Um so right there, that's out. So there are, I mean, multiple types of people that worship Satan. And you have to remember that a lot of these occurred during the old uh, satanic panic. And yeah. even before that, you had like the uh, Charles, Charles Manson cult and shit like that. They did fucked up shit. And you had uh, uh, Anton LaVey and all those people. And what the theory is, is that these cults are mutilating the cattle for ritual purposes. Like they drain the blood for a ritual. This is a ritual sacrifice. They take the organs for rituals. I'm not arguing that that's possible, but I am going to argue that such cults are not nearly as prevalent as the satanic panic made people believe. And again, these are very large, in some cases, very aggressive animals who are not just going to sit there and take it. I don't care how many cult members you bring out there in the field with their robes and hoods and fucking candles or whatever the fuck they got. And lightsabers. Don't forget lightsabers. Yeah, they got lightsabers. All yeah. right. Next one. Mm-hmm. Fucking aliens, bud. <laughs> Fucking aliens. Putting precision, um, randomness, but still somewhat importance. Uh, no struggle. Strange occurrences before and after. Um, some sort of like radioactive vibe that makes other animals avoid them. I'm going to say this is the most prevalent. So what I'll say is if, if you believe in extraterrestrial involvement here on Earth, this one's a little bit harder to argue. The only thing we can't really answer is why. Why? But why do they do anything they do? Who the fuck knows? Right. And there have been UFO sightings in areas where cattle mutilations have occurred at similar times to cattle mutilations occurring. And generally this takes place in like Colorado South area where a lot of UFOs are fucking seen. So now look at South Park. They covered cattle mutilations in 1999 and it was the aliens. There you go. Yep. All right. One more. Is okay. Hang the, on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. I'm ready. The ding dang chupacabras. Chupacabras. Chupacabras and and or other cryptid critters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Chupacabras. Goat suckers. I mean, so we haven't done chupacabra yet. Okay. Just so we're just not going to get too far into this because we'll spoil just it. But. Getting like very basic things out that you should know if you listen to this podcast. That's probably fair. It's a it's not a very big creature. And it's like a, a dog with fangs, basically. And in some Iterations, tellings of yes. it yeah ain't gonna take a cow down ain't gonna take a horse down the only part of this that matches the chupacabra specifically is, is the, the blood sucking the exsanguination part mm-hmm. but the chupacabra otherwise did not do this sort of damage to the animals it was reported to have killed during its reign mm-hmm. now they do say other cryptids that's pretty fucking vague, but you got to give me a better answer than that. So, like, and a, how's a Bigfoot going to do this shit? He might be able to fight a bull and kill it. Mount Shasta Jedi Bigfoot. Mount Shasta Jedi <laughs> Bigfoot. There it is. We get, we done did damn figured it out. But I do have to say, unless they're using the force to sedate these animals as to where there is no struggle. It's going to be a struggle. There's going to be a struggle. There's going to be fear. There's going to be footprints. There's going to be. There, uh, aliens to me is the most prevalent. It, it's kind of weird when a- aliens is the most uh, logical explanation, but kind of where I'm landing too. what it really is. I guess I don't know. It's a mystery. That's why we're fucking talking about it. But yeah, yeah. you guys let us know what you think. Uh Join, join the Facebook group. Join and our tell Facebook us. group. Let us know. Uh, we're also on Instagram and the Twitter, and you can email us at paranaturalpodcast at gmail.com. 
visit our website, paranaturalpodcast.com. You can leave us a message there or hit the little green button and leave us a voicemail. Or newly on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, we're on the TikToks too. Yeah. We're ticking and talking. Taking the talks. Because we're hip. We're cool. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to share the show with a friend. Leave us that five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Until next time, we love you. Good night. Love you not as much as the Patreon people, but still love you. Good night. (laughs) 